we were the only ones there watching it. And so it feels like your own private vacation. Yeah, that is awesome. And there were bikes, uh, pre-runner pickup trucks, and there were the great big transport trucks as well. And watching them blast across the Sahara was something else. How close is this? Today is a big, big day because this is where the real trip begins, this expedition into the Sahara Desert. Oh, I can't ride this luggage. In order to do that, we need to make some big changes, which is a complete crew change for people who are very experienced with the desert and get two Toyota Land Cruisers. But we're heading to these guys, and these guys are a lot smaller. It should be a lot easier. They're four-wheel drive, so they'll be able to take us to the dunes, wherever we want to do, so. Uh, this too? Goodbye, Rhino. You got us this far safely. The this place that you are going to, there is no place to hide. It's awesome. Good. All right, so we're gonna hit the road. To the desert, yeah. You know, we made sure that when we came out here, that we got ourselves uh, hooked up with the right people. We hooked up with a duel. We're in good hands, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. He knows the desert like the back of his hands. Someone will find us in case we lose our way. Don't fall asleep, Justin. So we've got to make a few crucial stops on our way out of town to pick up supplies. This is going to be the last gas station that we see probably for a very long time, which is why we've got to fill the tank and fill all the jerry cans at the top. Ice cream, some sun dunes. That's the best. <laughs> we've left the city and modern civilization behind. And now just beyond the power lines, about 100 meters from here, we're leaving the asphalt behind. Ever since we touched down in Libya, this is what we came here for. We're going from here, from Maknusa. We just left the salt road here. And we're heading toward Wadi Makhandur. Now or never, I guess. Let's then jump to the Japanese camel. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving the road not just for the day to go for a nice little picnic in the desert, we're leaving it for days. We're doing everything we can. We've got um, the right people with the right experience and they've come prepared with food, water, lots of gas. This is the biggest desert in the world and we're about to take it on. You know, you never know what's going to happen. We can get flat, five flat towers and then we're stranded out there. driving for a few hours now. We finally found the first signs of life out in the desert and there's a pack of camels here. So I'm gonna see how close I can get to them. I'm not sure if they see too many people daily. So I think uh, seeing me was a treat and for me to see them was also a treat as well. What kind of music are you guys listen to? You guys are listening to any kind of music? Huh, you don't say. Mm. I thought we are friends. Who's going to be the next president? That's what I'm trying to find out. Remember guys, every vote matters. I guess they don't like it when uh, people start talking politics. They just leave. Maybe I smell or something. What the heck is this thing? It looks like a rabble or something. I have no idea. Oh. Camel egg. Camel egg? Yeah. No, I fell for that trick once already in Jordan. Camels don't lay eggs. They're a mammal, and they tried to get me once on that before, so I don't, I don't believe it's camel eggs. I will show you the camel nest on one of the trees, ah. and you can see the camels <laughs> flying. I don't believe it. <laughs> we may make omelette of this. A camel it's omelette. big enough to feed everyone. Camel omelette. That'll be a first for me. The guys are just starting to let some of the air out of the tires because of the change in terrain. We've gone from absolute flat nothing in every direction and in the distance we're even seeing the sand dunes. We've traveled 
pretty much all day across the desert through a variety of different landscapes. We've now crossed into a very rocky landscape, hiked down away from the cars, and we're just starting to notice some of the first rock carvings, 12,000 year old rock carvings, perhaps some of the earliest evidence of mankind, period. And I'm seeing it with my own eyes. This rock carving is actually running for 12 kilometers. This is the start here, and the wadi running that way, and it's 12 kilometers of rock carvings. Every single rock, but there's two cows headless, the upper one headless. Okay, yeah. Mouth here in the head, and ear. If you were to carve something, what would you carve? A guitar of Led Zeppelin. like his music. Scott, what would you carve? If I was trying to leave little hints of my interest, I'd probably carve, carve an airplane and a guitar. A guitar that flies. This one here, you can see the giraffe's head and it comes down. And then you see another giraffe head here, I think. I don't swear that they're doing it. You sure they're not, uh... Let me see if I can see a baby giraffe over here. It's unbelievable just to see the condition, the skill that they had, detail, perspective. It's almost like you take a step back in time and... Let's bring them full of this rock. Two lines are fighting. You can see the two eyes and the two ears here, the face uh, going yeah. like this. Yeah. Stay away. <laughs> All these different animals that we've seen, like lions and giraffe and stuff like that, obviously they don't live in the desert. So it must be forest is there, running water here. This was a river running. So 12,000 years ago, if we were standing here, well, not only would there be an artist carving this probably, but there'd be like lions yeah. and giraffe, sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. Just with the last sliver of light, we've made it to the edge of the real sand dunes. An awesome way to end our first day in the desert. I should always make a bet with Scott, because I always smoke him when it comes to putting up tents. Look at this. Ah, is that you guys sleep right now? No. Woke up pretty early this morning. This is the first sand dune we've come across and just wanted to kind of see what I had ahead of me. There's so much beauty to the desert, the sunrises, the sunsets, when you spend all day in the sun and it's beating down on you and you're cursing it every five seconds, for it to give you this beautiful sunrise and sunset at the beginning or the end of your day, you know, it makes it all worthwhile. Got up with the sun this morning. Everybody's just getting a quick bite to eat and then packing up everything back into the Land Cruisers again and heading a lot further out into the desert. Now we'll go another 200 plus kilometers even deeper into the Sahara. Now we're heading out to the Akakis mountain range. And is there any people that live out there at all? Or? Few Tuareg families. So now we head 300 kilometers or so further into the desert to the Akakis mountains. Apparently, uh, these guys here have a flat. They're either out of spares or they have no spare. It's not the kind of place that AAA comes out in. Uh, yeah. I got flat. Can you fix it? Where are you? The Sahara. Yeah. Where about? Uh. I don't know. Luckily, we've come along and I don't know if they're going to give them one of our spares for it. Yeah, they better have some chocolate or something. <laughs> We're saving their lives here. They're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think we should right. demand some chocolate. What sure, do you think? Sure, We will ask for chocolate. At least. <laughs> Oh, we are not going to give them a hand, actually. It's in the middle of nowhere. They may use my satellite phone to make a phone call to Tripoli to ask for help, and they will be here in two weeks. The chocolate pirates of the Sahara. That's what we are. We've given them a spare. They've actually had to salvage bolts from one of the other tires in order to put this one on. I guess in the desert, you use what you got. We're losing a spare? I guess so. For our truck or...? <laughs> we will run now because I think they will ask for some food <laughs> and they will ask for an extra driver if they if we have. <laughs> Today Abdul brought us to a spot where one of the last remaining Tuareg families that still lives traditionally out in the Akakis Mountains. I mean these are people who have roamed the Sahara Desert for hundreds of years now, from as far west as Mauritania and as far east as the Sudan. What keeps them here? 
you know your destiny, you don't know where to live. His father chose this place. How many family members does he have out here? 